Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Michaels Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 6th, 2019. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. This season we are covering amateur or ham, if you want to call it that, radio. So today we are going to start talking about one of the, probably the most important component of a radio besides the radio itself, the antenna and radio wave basics. What? Let's talk about antennas first. What is an antenna? Well, antenna is really any type of a conductor. Um, well, what does that mean? Uh, it can be just a simple wire. It doesn't have to be any, a fancy wire. It could be some, a junk piece of wire you pulled out of your house electrical wire. That will work. It could be a rod. It could be a pipe. Um, one of the um, n- more beginner antennas that a lot of people use is what they call a J-pole. It's made out of copper pipe. You buy a 10-foot chunk of copper pipe. You cut things in certain dimensions, and you solder everything together, and you solder on a connect an antenna connector, and you have a two meter uh, antenna that will work with your little handhelds. Pretty cool. Um, I have seen people use tape measures. The old, uh, you know, they take an old tape measure and they cut it up in chunks and they make an antenna out of that. I have seen metal coat hangers. Literally, if it conducts electricity, if it's something you're like, I should nav- never plug this into the electrical outlet because I will get shocked probably works for an antenna. I even watched a video of a guy using his um, metal folding um, chairs. You know, like the outdoors type. The old, I, I call them the old school where you have the little aluminum frame and you have the webbing for the seat. He used those as an antenna. And I believe he actually transmitted off of that too. If it conducts, it might work. So, um, what it what makes a pe- a chunk of wire an antenna? Well, the key is it must match a fraction of the signal's wavelength. Uh, the one mo- ones I n- most commonly see is half wavelength, uh, quarter wavelength, and five eighths wavelength. So, if you start talking about your quarter wavelength, especially, um. Usually that requires some sort of what they call a ground plane. Uh, basically, think of, you know, if you look at a mirror, let's say you put an antenna on top of a mirror and you look down, it's now twice as long. Well, that's essentially what you're doing with a ground plane is you're making it twice as long. So quarter wave especially that works that way, halfway, five-eighths. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I do know those two are, those three numbers are kind of your three your main three um, wavelength match for lengths of of, um, antennas. There are a few more, but those are the main ones that I see most of the time is people trying to match one of those three. So let's just say on a two meter, if you're trying to hit two meters, your half wave is one meter, your quarter wave is half a meter. No, I'm not going to do the other one in my head. You get the point. Um, so a radio wave, like we've talked before, consists of both electrical and ma- magnetic energy, which oscillate the same frequency as the, the radio frequency current in the antenna. So it's literally just kind of vibrating and releasing this energy in the, that um, appropriate wavelength based on the length of the antenna. 
Uh, another concept that they uh, bring to this, and I mentioned this in my SSTV or the ISS SSTV, International Space Station, Slow Scan TV, um, I talked about polarization there slightly. So uh, for most of your normal handheld mobile operation on your UHF, VHF type bands, you're going to use a vertical polar- polarization. Basically, you're holding the an- the antenna straight up and down. Um, most handhelds, you're supposed to hold it that way. If you look at antennas on vehicles, they're, they're vertically aligned and so on. Um, very important because you're point to point. So you need to match that, uh, that direction. It does, you can at least receive going sideways. You may not be able to transmit very well. That's why you always try, try and keep it the same. And that's why when you're talking FM band on the two meter and 70 centimeter UHF, VHF, you're vertically aligned. Everything's consistent that way. Now, when you start talking high frequency or HF, polarization really doesn't matter because what you're doing is you're bouncing off the ionosphere and the ionosphere automatically will change that polarization anyway. So it's not as important in HF. People have done HF um, with vertical mounts and there are vertical mounts out there. A good portion of people use uh, dipoles or some sort of variation of a dipole. Those are usually horizontal. So either one works just fine for that. Um, As I mentioned, uh, for transmissions from space, this one becomes a little bit different because a lot of transmissions are actually, the polarization is actually circular. Um, So you have to build a little bit different type of antenna in order to catch those waves. I've seen some do kind of a, I don't know what you call a squiggle, if you want to call it that, I guess, on your antenna with a a wire mounted vertically along the path. Uh, If you look up satellite, um, come on, satellite Yagi antennas, you will see some examples of that. Uh, There's other ones where they have the driver or the, uh, the antenna kind of at a cross. That's another way to do that. Um, in, in my particular case, to get those signals from the space station, I had to hold my antenna horizontally in, in order to get a, a signal. I actually turned it during a transmission, and it went to all static. So I, I know now I can see how it was working at the time. Um, I don't know if upside down does it do us anything or not. I don't think it does. It's still... You know, if you hold it upside down vertically, it's still vertical, I think. So that probably doesn't matter. Um, so polarization is important to, to know the pipe on the mode you're in. Um, the wavelength is important to know, or at least how the conductors are built. Um, and then they go into feed line. And what is feed line? A feed line is used to deliver radio signals to and from your antenna. If you're a little on a little handheld, you don't have feed lines, or at least it's internally built, if you want to call it that. Um, you're put, attaching the antenna directly to the body of the device. Now, if you have an external antenna on your vehicle that you hook your little handheld up to, you're going to be using a feed line. Um, the book goes into the, talking about the impedance of a feed line how much it prohibits flow of electricity because the longer the wire, the more loss you're going to have across the, the wire. They also talk about matching the impedance uh, between the feed line and the antenna. Um, most of this is pretty brief because when you, most cases in HF, it's a lot more minimal and it's not as in depth at, um, you know, the, is the book is not as in depth as it is at higher levels. Um, but it's definitely something to think about when you are trying to build an antenna. The next thing that they talk about within this section is antenna gain. Well, what is antenna gain? It is a radiated signal in a specific direction. 
And that is measured in dBi. Well, what is dBi? Well, it's decibels as compared to an isotropic antenna. An isotropic antenna, in theory, would radiate in all directions equally. Uh, this is absolutely impossible because you're talking about a little dot. And there's no way even to hook up an antenna or hook up a feed line, much less you know, anything else. So this is the, the, you know, the ideal antenna, so to speak, but that's impossible. So the measure of all antennas is based on this theoretical perfect antenna and how much gain you get from that perfect antenna. So um, perfect means signal in all directions, not perfect as in it's possible. Um. So an antenna gains its gain by uh, radiating radio waves that and that add together, or sorry, an antenna creates gain by radiation of radio waves that add together in preferred direction and cancel others. So I think I've mentioned Yagi a few different times. So what is a Yagi antenna? More likely, if you have seen, uh, I shouldn't say in all cases, in many cases, you're going to see a TV antenna, like something you use, uh, put on your roof for in for TV uh, signal. That is a, usually a Yagi. At least a good portion of them usually are. I'm For sure, I have one on my roof. Um, so what that does is it radiates mostly in one direction. Uh, there's a couple little areas that will radiate in other spots, but in general, it's it's, it's a short um, um, radius, I guess, if you want to call it that, from that point of the antenna kind of going out. So it's very concentrated in your signals in one direction. Um, and then on the back side, or, or the sides, there's very little signal transmission. You're more than likely not to get anything off the antenna. So a, a Yagi is kind of an easy one because it's directional, but you also have bi-directional. Your Wi-Fi in your house is usually bi-directional. Um, it, it radiates from all sides of that. You, you know, I know some of the newer ones don't have it, but a lot of the older ones had the actual antenna that would get you mounted to it. It radiated in all directions exactly the same, and you might be getting like one, uh, like a two dBi or something. I don't know. Um, I'm just throwing a number out there. So you're still focusing the radio waves, and it's not radiating directly underneath, more likely. So a Yagi would be a beam or directional antenna, um, and then that focuses the signal in one direction. They also talk about um, an elevation patterns and just a few, a little bit of kind of high level overview of all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then they talk about the decibels actually and how what is a decibel. So tip for this, um, kind of to study it a little bit, it gets very confusing at first. And at some point when I was going through it, I'm like, okay, it kind of makes sense. Um, for instance, one question is, was the approximate amount of change measured in decibels of a power increase from 5 watts to 10 watts? Well, the answer is 3 decibels. So if you divide, if it's divisible by 2, if I, if I remember right now, if it's divisible by 2, it's, um, it's 3 dB. If it's divisible by 10, it's, no, yeah, if it's divisible by 10, it's 10 dB. So the next one, so then the next one is a little bit trickier because it says a decrease from 12 watts to 3 watts. The answer is actually minus 6 because you can divide that by 2 and you get 2. Or, yeah, you can divide that in half and you get 2 twos. No, oh, whatever. I, my math is not working this late at night, I guess. Ultimately, it's minus six is what the answer is. And then the final one is if you want to increase power from 20 watts to 200 watts, well, that's a 10 dBi increase. 
it's all logarithmic and they they break down the math for you. Ultimately, if you don't want to memorize the math, that is fine. Just remember those three answers, and if that happens to appear, you'll like your brain will trigger and say, Oh, five to ten, that's three. Twelve to three, that's six, minus six. So that's one tip I I can get you out of this one is at least for me, it was easier to memorize the answers than it was to actually try and memorize the formula because I mean, let's face it, in the real world, you're going to have the book, or at least I hope you keep the book, so you're going to have the book, and then you can just look up the math if you need to figure it out yourself. Um, so, holy cow, this is 16 minutes again. I am going to wrap it up here, and um, I will uh, talk to you tomorrow with we'll talk about feed, more about feed lines and then a term called SWR. So until tomorrow, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. You can find my website at uh, mikewills.me. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook. They're both. Just look for Mike Wills. You'll find me. Uh, my email is mike at mikewills.me. And uh, until tomorrow, 73 from WX0 MIK. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0 MIK. 73.